Hello? Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Okay. Thank right. you. Hello, everybody. This is Gene Tamashiro um, here on this beautiful Hawaiian Kingdom Day. Uh, Namoku Okeave in Hilo on Hawaii Island. And I'm very grateful that we have uh, uh, Chad here who's going to interview me for an up-and-coming radio show as well as uh, we are launching, uh, relaunching Aloha Nation Live, uh, FM Radio 93.5. And uh, also big mahalos to um, my good friend, my dear friend, Roger K., who is also a sovereign Hawaiian. We're just trying to get the word out to people um, that uh, uh, know that Hawaiian Kingdom is in continuity. And in fact, it is. Most people actually know Hawaii's true political status. But the question arises, so if the Hawaiian Kingdom does continue to exist, how do we begin the process of, uh, uh, you know, restoring our nation? And because Hawaiian Kingdom is not a corporation and it is in continuity, unlike, I would say, 99% of the countries on earth today that are actually corporations providing uh, government services, yes, they are, but they're actually corporations. And let's be more specific uh, as far as the United States by its own definition, United States Code, Article 28, Section 3002, Line 15, Definition of United States. Well, United States, according to their own definition, they're telling you this, it's a federal corporation, okay? So officially, somebody created a corporation, somebody named the corporation, and somebody owns it, and all the assets therein. Although it's not true and lawful because it was done under so much um, stealth and non-full disclosure, the fact is that people uh, on the planet are running around claiming they have jurisdiction over these United States and over, in our case, the Hawaiian Kingdom. And really what they're standing on is color of law. They're standing on corporation statutes and regulations that do not pass the test of natural law, truth, and justice. And as sovereign people with unalienable God-given rights, and you don't have to believe in the Creator the way I do. Everybody's got their own individual path uh, as to how they want to walk with their Maker, no problem. I do have a relationship with Yeshua the Christ. I'm proud of it. That's my walk. But here in Hawaiian Kingdom, nobody is persecuted for um, having you know, a different faith spiritually. Nobody is persecuted for having no faith. You could be a full-blown atheist, okay? Just do no harm. So in Hawaiian Kingdom, where the Creator's law, which is basically be truthful, do no harm, and honor your word, it's been codified into this soil. Declaration of Rights, 1839, Kamehameha III, Kauwiki Oli. Now, to give you a small but very important sample of how we can confirm that this is the Creator's kingdom here on earth, what's the first line of the Declaration of Rights, 1839? I'll tell you. God, Creator, Keakua, call it what you will, hath made of one blood all nations of men, people, to dwell on earth in unity and blessedness. Take note here that he's not just saying to dwell in unity and blessedness in Hawaii. He said, to dwell on earth. We're talking about universal law. We're talking about the only law that is actually lawful on earth. And it basically comes down to, again, what is the truth? Was any harm done or being done? And what is the status of agreements? That's been codified onto this Hawaiian Kingdom soil Declaration of Rights, 1839. So we're very fortunate in that we can apply the natural law for justice and truth and to clarify what? Clarify status. Who are you? Where do you say you are with evidence? And what is the law of this land, of this aina, with evidence? And so 
the next level. I mean, okay, let me back up here a little bit. Hawaiians of all colors have known, as well as many of you out there on radio land and in video land, you guys know. We know Hawaii's true political status. We know what happened in 1893 when they arrested our queen, basically at gunpoint, locked her up in Iolani Palace, and then proceeded under color of law and propaganda and threat of force and violence to, you know, to usurp a lawful, independent, sovereign nation. Hawaiian kingdom is in continuity. It's just that our government was shut down, but the kingdom continues. And that people know. So we're in the process right now, and everyone has a different kuleana how to make that happen. But our kuleana, my kuleana, is to empower people with the tool of the truth in the law. In the law that is actually, as in the United States Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Same in Hawaii. These truths, this law that covers the whole earth, it's not written by man. Imbued in man's heart, we know what is porno and righteous and what is not. But layers and layers and years and years of corporation, presumption, maritime law, law of the sea, um, basically byproducts of politics and money and conspiracy yeah, and propaganda. These uh, uh, so-called laws have been imposed upon Hawaii, upon what was a constitutional republic in America, but what are now, according to the certain people in supposed positions of authority, they're operating under color of law. Now, I just made a claim, and I, we need to give everybody the respect and the opportunity to make their claim or to rebut my claim. Okay, so how are we, uh, how are we, how are we clarifying status and the law? Basically, what we do is I am a man, you're a man, we have unalienable rights. We have the right to make a claim, okay? Claim of who you think you are, where do you think you are, what is the law, okay? And now you put that in writing, you autograph it. Sign it. And in my case, I put my thumbprint too. So I want to really be clear that this is what I stand on. This is the truth that I stand on. Now, I will take that claim and I will put a notice of demand for particulars or discovery upon another individual who I perceive as allegedly doing harm against me, against our land, against the truth, against the law. Okay, but we respectfully submit uh, a notice for demand of particulars, in this case, to the chairperson of the Board of Land and Natural Resources, which is above the Department of Land and Natural Resources, or DLNR. So the BLNR is, is chaired by Suzanne Case. Okay, and about, it's been about three weeks already. We, we, we served her notice and a demand for particulars emanating God's law, the truth, Hawaiian kingdom law, emanating out of Hawaiian kingdom onto her, in her office, okay? Filed at the DLNR office in Hilo. Sent two certified notices through the mail. Two times sending Hawaiian kingdom marshals to her office. We have not got any confirmation from her herself that she received it however we know she has why is what is the proof of that her office called me her office called me to find out hey what's this all about i say everything this is all about is is clarified on your notice including your notice which is a charging instrument that 17 families on the kalapana lava field has got to do what Suzanne Case and her office demand them to do. Move all their houses, move all their infrastructure out. You've got 30 days, and if you don't do it, we're threatening you that you could be charged $15,000 a day. Really? That's right. Now, it's on their charging instrument. Okay, well, you got a right to make a charging instrument. And we're grateful that Suzanne Case allowed or decided to have her signature 
on that charging instrument, which to us looks like a threat that is not based on lawful evidence. So they're making this threat that you got to do what we say you got to do because we have title. If you don't have title, you don't have jurisdiction. They're claiming jurisdiction. If you claim jurisdiction, you've got to claim, you've got to claim and prove title. Does that make sense? You guys got that? If you say you got jurisdiction, how do we verify jurisdiction? Title or contracts and agreements. Okay, so we're not allowing the presumption of jurisdiction or the presumption of title to run roughshod over the rights of people to full disclosure and substantive due process. Full disclosure and substantive due process. Two key unalienable rights that all free men and women, you know, deserve to exercise and protect and afford each other that right. Full disclosure, substantive due process. So it's been her turn. We sent the notice uh, uh, for demand for particulars. Hey, Suzanne, are you a corporate fiction actor, which it looks like you are? in the state of Hawaii corporation, underneath the United States corporation, federal corporation? Or are you a true woman, ready to adjudicate controversy on this land in facts, truth, and the law? You decide and get back to us. We gave her 10 days. It's been over two weeks right now. I did get a phone call from the office wondering if this is actually a for real notice and demand for particulars, and it is for real. Uh, it is for real, and, and you know, real people have to stand in honor and then do you know, presentments and go back and forth with lawful presentments for the public record since it involves public lands. Why is everybody getting to move the whole home? Uh, like, well, that's right. That's a great question. So... The key of all of this, what is the question that arises when somebody, you know, makes a threat? Who are, who are they making the threat? I, I know. I see what you mean. When somebody <laughs> makes a threat, okay, it's like, okay, wow, great. So you're making a claim that you have jurisdiction, and then you made a threat that you're going to charge us, in 15, this case, 17 000 families, 15000 a day. Each house, each property. Well, or, yeah, those are the details. The right. bottom line is you're making this claim on the presumption that you have title. To, to say something like that in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, they do this all the time, everywhere. I know. This is going on everywhere. So it, it, this methodology, this lawful technology, applies to every controversy on the land. And fortunately, Hawaiian Kingdom, which is in continuity, it continues, okay, is, is the home of the Creator's law on earth. We are not a corporation. Okay, we hold each other accountable and support each other's unalienable right. And so this is what we're doing to Suzanne Case. And I'm looking forward to getting the word out to uh, true Kanakas of all colors, Hawaiians of all colors, sovereign people with unalienable rights all over the world. You can utilize this lawful technology to not only clarify your status and the law, and then go stand in honor, put it in writing, sign it, and go stand in honor, and apply this to everyone in your world that appears to be trespassing on your unalienable rights. Unalienable rights, and we're invoking full disclosure and substantive due process. Give somebody the respect of eh, 10 days, 21 days, it's up to you. Okay, she's technically in default right now. She's not responded. I'm gonna make a courtesy call and say, hey, you guys, you have another opportunity to repent from what looks like, you know, trespass, from what looks like harm, and certainly harm is crime. I'm not here to punish anybody. You know, we're just here to clarify all the parties concerned. Suzanne Case, love your sister. You have initiated an action that makes you a party to this controversy. You have signed the charging instrument. I have signed the instrument that is challenging you and welcoming you to clarify who you are, where you say you are, and what you say is the law of this soil, of this aina. And that's it. 
If you don't respond, you're in dishonor and default. And everything you sign, every authorization that you sign is provably with forensic evidence unlawful. Okay, I'm meeting with Hawaiians today to clarify and to empower our people, all good people, not just Americans or Hawaiians or Brazilians, everybody. Everybody on earth is a child of the creator of the universe and we are reclaiming our unalienable rights to full disclosure and substantive due process with aloha. With aloha. Okay, here you go. All right. That's basically it, guys. <laughs> aloha. Okay. Any All more right. questions? Uh, uh, so I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I wanted to ask you. Uh, yeah. So uh, I wanted to ask you how, how long have you been, um, you know, getting people together in this sense of. Uh, with in the meetings is that what the meetings they call upon are okay. and I also yeah. uh, I wanted to know how okay. uh, you know um, you. more about that yeah sure uh, sure thank you thank you Chad um, you know I'm not doing this uh, um, all by myself okay I'm standing on the Creator's law and uh, one of the reasons why we did set up uh, the circle of sovereigns otherwise known as the Hawaiian Kingdom Jural Assembly, is the, the people have an unalienable right and responsibility to come together and to uh, um, adjudicate controversy that occurs on this soil with honor, with truth, de to determine, excuse me, to determine what is the truth, what are the facts regarding this controversy, in this case, title of land, right? Yeah title of land which is directly connected to so-called jurisdiction okay now now everyone who has a claim regarding title of this land that land that whatever you're all invited to bring your claim with your evidence okay has any harm been done you know within this controversy if nobody stands up and goes yeah harm's being done to me or to my land or to hawaii or to wherever california wherever if harm is being done every man every woman has a right to claim harm but you yeah now just because you claim it and you talk about it that's not enough what you gotta do is you gotta put it in writing okay put it in writing sign it to verify that your it's called a verified claim that your claim is not just gossip if you just wanking away, va va, va ah, no one cares. No one. Well, it's it has to be treated for what it is. It's just gossip. It's just hearsay. Yeah. Okay. It has no standing in the law until somebody stands in honor, creates a verified claim, and then presents it for the public record into the world. Yeah. yeah. So we file it at the county clerk. We file it at the deal in our office. You file it in the courthouse. You know, you, you put bulletins, you go on the radio, you know, you communicate. You communicate about what is the truth, harm that you s perceive, and what is the law? What is the law that this man or that man or this man, what is the law that you're standing on? And once people do that, now they're in honor. Now all others that are in the controversy, in this case, the one who authorized the charging instrument, right? right? Yeah. Okay. And now you invite them. Hey, with all due respect, we need to know who you are, who you say you are. Where, where do you say you are? And so what, uh, what is the law? Yep. Okay. You know what I, mean? I think I know what you mean. But, well, basically, we apply lawful principles in all of our relationships, whether it's between you and your, your, your partner, your significant other, your wife, right? Uh, the mayor, yeah, in this case, the, the chairperson of the BLNR. You know, every individual has um, uh, uh, different kinds of relationships. You know, a man with the government, a man with the corporation, a man with a woman. I mean, it's just on and on. But it's born within us to know what is pono, what is righteous, and what is not, okay? And there is a technology that's 
you know, it's designed into, into lawful human relations. Okay, that's why we have meetings every Sunday at Uncle Robert's in Kalapana of a Circle of Sovereigns or Hawaiian Kingdom Jural Assembly. As I put forward and as anybody, and we can use, the, everyone's invited to use the Jural Assembly. Okay, it's an independent arbitration body to verify that individuals have done their due diligence for the public record to serve lawful notice and demands upon each other. Okay. Okay. So, you know, yeah, there some of them are my friends, some of them I never even met yet <laughs> because everyone's invited. Everyone's invited to come forward and clarify their status and confirm the law. Because, because like the Americans said, we hold these truths to be self-evident. It is the law. It is the creator's law of truth, no harm, and honor your word. It is the creator's law that is, covers the earth, and the earth could be flat or it could be globe. I don't know yet. I guess that's a big controversy. We're going to find out. But, but that covers the earth, yeah? And it unites the people. There is unity in the law worldwide if you know what it is and you apply it and because there's unity in the law the potential for unity in all people exists and we're invoking that mm -hmm. and we're enforcing that with aloha okay the truth is what convicts you don't need guns and money okay you just got to stand in honor and pursue what is the truth has any harm been done? And wh who are we talking to? Who am I, who am I talking to? <laughs> exactly. Who's charging me with something here? Okay? Well, Clarify that for the public record. Here you go. Uh, well, one more thing. Uh, I wanted to wanna hold ask. That? Oh, sure. I wanted to ask about... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know much about the uh, Hawaiian Kingdom... Uh, yeah, uh, the Hawaiian Kingdom license plates. Oh, that was something okay, else wow, I wanted okay. to ask about. That's an okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Um, Hawaiians of all colors have a right to travel lawfully and to be lawful in our own country. Right, yeah. Our country does exist. Okay, but we're in the process now of clarifying status and the law so that, for example, one of the first things that's going to happen is... We're going to begin to travel lawfully in our own country under the Creator's Law, as been codified, Declaration of Rights, 1839. Okay. okay? Um, the way we do this is, uh, the way we will be doing this, similar to, or pretty much exactly, the way we have served notice a demand for particulars to the chairperson of the BLNR, we're going to do the same exact thing to the so-called governor. Okay, are you, David Ige, a true Kanaka, a real man? Or are you, David Ige, an, a corporate fiction actor? You know, operating in what law? Operating in what law? State of Hawaii? Oh, making claims. Is the state of Hawaii actually lawful in Hawaii? Is yeah. the state of Hawaii actually lawful? This is the question we need to ask. Does the state of Hawaii actually have lawful title to the lands that is appears to be presumed to have title and jurisdiction over i'm just asking who are you to operate in such claims now your turn to clarify your status and where what you think the law is on this soil okay now david ige is going to get one and attorney general claire connors is going to get one and pretty much anybody you're dealing with I mean, it just so happens they're, you know, high office government corporation officials. But anybody you're dealing with, you know, give them the respect. Okay, it's weird that we say it like this because they've been harming so much. But give them the respect, you know, to make a claim, but also require, and this is a fact, that all claims must be supported by facts and evidence. Right. Okay. okay, that's that's the way the law really works, Okay. And we have an independent jural assembly to examine claims vis-a-vis -vis facts and evidence to arrive at conclusions in the law. Now, if you're wondering if you could create a jural assembly in your hometown, yes, 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 yes. 
you are you have that unalienable right to participate lawfully in your own community and i think it's a responsibility i think everyone who has that god-given gift of unalienable rights for freedom and truth that that you also apply that protect that and hold each other accountable with aloha to that unalienable right so um Circle of sovereigns, jural assemblies operating in the Creator's law, they should be everywhere. They should be everywhere because that is, ultimately, that's the law. Well, I've noticed a lot of meetings. Uh, well, we meet, we have met uh, since, or well, we started Circle of Sovereigns August 3rd, 2017. And in the last three months, every Sunday we meet in Kalapana. Which is really, it's like, you know, ground floor, grassroots Hawaiian kingdom. Okay, yeah. so, you know, we're aligning uh, uh, the, the, the historical truth, the cultural and spiritual truth and values. You know, we're aligning that all together. Um, uh, and, and so grateful that uh, the families, uh, including the Kili'i Ho'omalu family, uh, Brother Sam, Cousin Sam, uh, you know, the son of Uncle Robert himself, uh, has opened up uh, that amazing facility so that Hawaiians of all colors, you know, recognizing and remembering Hawaiian, Hawaiian kingdom law, who they are, where they are, and what is the law. Yeah, you know, I keep saying that because that's really, really important. Yeah, actually, every Sunday, every Sunday at uh, 1 o'clock at Uncle Robert's um, uh, in Kalapana. Here you go. All right. Uh Thanks a lot, Gene. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got so, one more thing. Oh, one well, more contact. One more contact information. Oh, sure. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, if you're interested in more of this uh, information, um, and what's going on, uh, you can go to Gene Thomas Cheryl Facebook or also go to Circle of Sovereigns, one long word, circleofsovereigns.com. And uh, a lot of good information will be there to empower the Hawaiians of all colors and people worldwide of how to clarify status and the law in order to achieve peaceful and lawful remedy. All right. Aloha, Gene Tomashiro. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. All right. Thank you so much. Is that enough? Is that good? Yep. I'm going to take a little break. Thanks, Gene. Be right back. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs>